Hi, I'm Matt with RI3D Redux. I know a lot of teams are probably curious as how the game pieces may interact with the field elements. So uh, we have built a couple of the team field elements here and I'd like to show you how these cones and these cubes interact with the field elements real quick. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. So I am like 5'11". So this is dropping from roughly five feet. We assume you'll be able to pick up the piece from the human player station and drop it here. And, you know, obviously that's pretty easy. Uh, another thing we were curious about is if you had the cone, I don't know, not grab squarely and then you try to drop it, what would happen? So again, from about that same height, uh, it's hard to say if I'm influencing it or not, so we're trying to get something mechanized here, but you know, we found that you can get the cone to place that way, but if you drop it and it's roughly underneath the center, it's gonna end up going all the way on. Um, another thing that I was curious about is if you could lower and pull back. Again, I still have some tension on this, but you could lower, pull back. That's going to go on there. Um, we were playing around a little bit with a broomstick and then just seeing, you know, to simplify a robot motion. Um, so Brandon here can maybe put this on. Uh, we have a couple pivot points on here that are just screws. So we assumed you could drive in, uh, assuming the cone got knocked over, or you could have the robot knock it over. And uh, our robot's a little bit too wide. And then here we're trying to, you know, get that there. It's possible it's not, uh, not the smoothest thing. We're trying to do this to show that uh, maybe it takes a little bit more finesse to be able to score a cone on the field element here. Uh, again, we'd be pretty narrow, but we could flip our frame perimeter around and show that. So just a couple things, you know, like you can get the cone to pull off, but if you have the cone like this, it's gonna be difficult. You're gonna have to be able to maintain uh, control of the cone, which may be difficult to do, but you could come and lower and drop there. So just some things to think about, you know, we're thinking about that too. Um, if you're gonna pick up from the human player station or pick up from the floor, uh, obviously the human player station, being able to come in at a set height and still score. Uh, the other interesting, the, the cubes, they do deflate quite a bit. We have one inside, so we're in a garage. It's about uh, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. There's one just inside the door, I think. So we'll grab that, but this one has inflated. So uh, I guess pressure is there. That's nice that there is a jig, but they're pretty, you know, forgiving. We'll get one here that's a little bit more inflated. Uh, this is made out of plywood, which isn't exactly what the field will have, but there's a three inch lip all around. That's pretty forgiving for this. So you got a pretty big drop zone here. Oh wow, scored in the bigger one. Yeah, Brandon's got the, the warmed up one here that uh, Andy Mark generously brought us one of the measurement jigs here, but they do have quite a bit of bounce if you drop them from height when they're fully inflated. So that may be something you wanna look at. Obviously I'm right on the lip between the two scoring pieces, but if you do end up dropping it close to here, you know, I'm kind of seeing this for the first time. Uh, you may want to control the height that you drop from here. Again, roughly that same five feet. It makes sense there, but if you're on the edge, you know, you do get some bounce out of these. So that may be something you want to think about and, and try to adjust the height that you drop from uh, a little bit more controlled than just letting it go from the full, you know, player station height, human player station height. So uh, we're going to keep playing with this. I hope you guys do too. And uh, thanks for tuning in to Robot in Three Days.
This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at Kettering.edu slash first. Thank you to all of our suppliers and sponsors for the Robot in 3 Days Redux and Kettering Bulldogs programs.